Welcome to this Configured Terminal presentation. My name is David Bombal, CCIE 11023. This is a short sample from our CCNA training course, which you can find at ConfiguredTerminal.com. In this sample, we're going to look at one of the transition mechanisms from IP version 4 to IP version 6. I'm going to show you how to configure a static IPv6 over IPv4 tunnel. In the full course, we discuss IP version 6 in a lot of detail. We look at the formatting of an IP version 6 address. We look at the methods of assigning an IPv6 address. We look at IP version 6 routing protocols including RIPNG and OSPF. And I'll show you how to configure those routing protocols. We also look at various implementation strategies. I hope you enjoy this quick sample from our CCNA training course. Another transition mechanism is to use tunneling. In this example we have a host on the left hand side that is running IP version 6. On the right hand side this server is running IP version 6. But the routers are connected via an IP version 4 only network. So IP version 6 addresses will not be routed by this infrastructure. So what you can do is you can set up a tunnel between router 1 and router 2 to tunnel IP version 6 over IP version 4. There are multiple ways to do this. You can either use manual tunneling or dynamic 64 tunneling or intrasite automatic tunnel addressing protocol or lastly you can use Teredo tunneling. Now let's look at each of those in more depth. So here's an example of tunneling IP version 6 packets over an IP version 4 infrastructure. The MacBook on the left hand side sends IP version 6 data inside of an IP version 6 header to its default gateway which is let's say router 1. Router 1 will then take the IP version 6 information and encapsulate it inside IP version 4. A tunnel is set up from the local IP version 4 address of router 1 to the remote IP address on router 2. So please note this is an extra IP header in other words an IP version 4 header is prepended to the front of the IP version 6 header encapsulates the IP version 6 information so routers in the IP version 4 infrastructure never see the IP version 6 header they only see the IP version 4 header. Now I've shown more detail of the IP version 4 header I've shown you the source and destination addresses, but this is part of the same header. When the packet gets to router 2, the IP version 4 headers are stripped off and the packet is sent on the remote LAN as a pure IP version 6 packet. Now when setting up tunneling, it's important to remember that the protocol type is 41. So the IP version 6 packet is encapsulated within IP version 4 and when IPv4 encapsulates that IPv6 packet, a protocol type of 41 is specified in the IPv4 header. TCP, for example, has a protocol type of 6 and UDP a protocol type of 17. And in this case, IPv6 is set to protocol type 41. The header is 20 bytes in size when there are no options. This can cause some problems. The maximum transmission unit between our two hosts the MacBook and the server is reduced by 20 bytes because of this additional header. It can be difficult to troubleshoot issues with tunneling. As an example the routers in this cloud could be blocking protocol 41 and would need to be changed to allow that traffic through. In manual tunneling you are manually establishing the tunnel between router 1 and router 2. Now let's look at tunneling IP version 6 over IP version 4. So on our WAN we are only going to run IP version 4. So on serial 00 we're going to configure 10121 on R1 and on R2 serial 00 we're only going to configure 10122. So on router 1 show run interface serial 00 shows us that we still have IP version 6 configured. So let's remove that.
do show run interface serial 00, zero shows us that the IP address is removed. Let's remove rip just to clean up the configs. And as you can see, all IP version 6 configuration has been removed from this interface. Let's do the same on router 2. So interface serial 00, no IPv6 address, no IPv6 RIP enable. Once again, only IP version 4 on this interface. So back on router 1, if I type show IPv6 route, it'll only see the local routes. I will not be able to ping this remote network because there's no IP version 6 connectivity from this router to this router. So just to sum up, show run interface F0, F00 shows us that we're not running IP version 4 on the fast Ethernet interface. And we are not running IP version 6 on the serial interface of R1. On R2, show run interface F00 shows us that we're not running IP version 4 on the fast Ethernet interface and we are not running IP version 6 on the serial interface. So let's set up a tunnel to allow connectivity between the IP version 6 networks. So to do that you have to create a tunnel interface. So I'm going to say interface tunnel 0. I'm going to be lazy now and just say IPv6 address 2003 colon colon 1 Specify the tunnel source as 10.1.2.1. The tunnel destination is going to be 10.1.2.2, which is this IP address on the serial interface of R2. The tunnel mode is going to be IPv6 IP. Otherwise, the default of GRE would be used. In this case, I'm going to specify static route so this route is available through tunnel 0 on router 1. On router 2, I can do something similar. So create a tunnel interface, specify an IP version 6 address. Specify the tunnel source, tunnel destination, tunnel mode. Notice there are various options here. We're going to go for IPv6 over IP encapsulation. Specify a static route. Now let's see if it works. So on router 1, show IPv6 route shows me that static route through tunnel 0. So let's ping 2001 colon 1 colon 1 colon 3 colon colon 1 and as you can see it succeeds. If we do a trace you can see it succeeds. Just to prove this to you again, if I shut the tunnel down and then try and do a ping 
the ping will time out as you can see there. Do that again. So let's no shut the tunnel. Tunnel interface has come up. And there you go. It's working because the tunnel is now up and functioning. That concludes our sample from the CCNA training course discussing IP version 4 to IP version 6 transition using static tunneling. For more free information, please visit our blog at configureterminal.com. Thank you for watching.